Alright, hello my friends, and welcome back to another Brotato class guide. Today we're covering the Cyborg. I want to shout out Mark Seifer, Tom7403, and Flying Fish, who all requested the Cyborg, along with, I think, a couple other people who I'm afraid I didn't write down, but shout outs to you as well. If there's a class that you want to see, let me know, and I will add it to the list. So, the Cyborg is a very interesting character, and I understand why it was so heavily requested. How it works is you start with a minigun, and ranged damage modifications are increased by 250%, which is an insane amount. So, right away it looks like a damage character. But, halfway through the wave, all of your ranged damage turns into engineering at a rate of 1 to 2, so you get more engineering than, than you had ranged damage, so you end up with tons of, of free engineering from that. This means that your waves are going to be divided into two phases, the, the ranged damage phase and the engineering phase, and you need to have a build that can handle both. So this kind of gives you some problems, because any effects that you buy for the range damage phase, like percent damage, attack speed, and so on, won't help you during the engineering phase using the normal engineering builds. And of course anything that you buy for the engineering phase, uh, all the weapons that produce towers, extra structures, and so on, won't have any engineering during the range damage phase. So you're very multi-attribute dependent, it means that you there's a lot that you want to buy in the shop. I actually found that this character struggles a lot using what I think is the most common build for the cyborg that you'll see suggested, which is to start with the wrench and build five wrenches and just be a sort of normal engineering build. I think that because you end up sacrificing all of your secondary stats, your per or not secondary as the game terms them, but secondary to the range damage that you'll be buying, so percent damage and attack speed and critical strike and so on, you end up not having those stats matter. You end up with lots of stats that don't matter d during the engineering phase, and it can be very difficult to survive. And if you build for the engineering phase, then you're going to struggle to kill bosses and, and so on during the range damage phase. You also, I guess I should mention, can't buy melee or elemental damage, and you can't buy engineering the normal way. You pretty much just have to buy range damage. To counteract the multi-attribute dependency of the cyborg, I think that the most consistent weapon is actually one that you will not see me buy on pretty much any other character, except for challenge runs, and that's the screwdriver. The reason is that the screwdriver scales at 50% with engineering. So you can continue to buy percent damage and attack speed and so on, and then when your range damage turns into engineering at a rate of 1 to 2, you basically have 100% damage scaling on your screwdrivers uh, with engineering, because you're getting two at points of engineering for every range damage, and your range damage purchases are slightly more than tripled. This way you can just stay a combat character and pretty much ignore having to build structures or anything for the engineering phase and just use your screwdrivers as a melee weapon during that time. So we're going to grab a screwdriver and get into it. One other advantage that the cyborg has is that you start with the best healing item in the game, um, that being the minigun. Minigun attacks so quickly that it's going to give you so much HP with lifesteal that you don't need to buy health regeneration and can use the much more efficient lifesteal during the engineering phase as well, because it's not dependent on the minigun actually doing damage, it's just dependent on it hitting things. Here I'm going to roll, it's very important that we find ranged damage, because it's super efficient to buy ranged damage early, and of course I'd rather also find harvesting. Um, luck I would take as well, but I'm actually going to roll again, because I think it's so important to find ranged damage or harvesting on this character. At Two rolls, I, two re-rolls, I think we have gotten a little unlucky, but I'll buy just the attack speed. Definitely locking this bag, and we will lock any ranged damage item that we see as well. Let me keep rolling, and I'll buy a hatchet, uh, or not the hatchet, so, sorry, the screwdriver. Roll and buy a screwdriver. Roll, and we will pass on this one keep rolling. I will lock this turret. It's still useful to have the structures out uh, during the engineering phase, so having the turret locked I think is is overall pretty good. 
That was a pretty bad first chop, honestly. We found nothing that gives range damage. Um, didn't get range damage from our level up, but at least we have a bag locked, and that's pretty good. It's possible that I shouldn't have locked that turret even, but I think it, it will end up working out well. Notice that the, the wave timer turns blue after a certain amount of time. That marks that we've entered the engineering phase, so all our range damage, of which we currently have none, turns to engineering. Here I'll, I'll take the harvesting, although again I would like ranged damage, and we're going to roll four screwdrivers. Really important to get all of our screwdrivers set up, and we are ready to go. We have an elite on wave 12, which means that we want to have enough damage to kill the elite. Usually you're going to want to try to kill the elite during the ranged damage phase because you have a minigun, which is very, very good at killing elites. Um, and the screwdriver melee attacks are going to be less impactful when it comes to killing elites. Let me get down here and clear this tree out. During the early game, the landmines, of course, will help us with wave clear, but for the most part, we're going to be ignoring the landmines and playing as though we're a melee character. I will take, I guess, one quarter of a point of engineering over three materials, uh, just because three materials is so inconsequential. And here, I'm going to reroll this. I really would like to find ranged damage or harvesting. Continuing to throw in rerolls, we'll take harvesting. And finally, we found a point of ranged damage. It's so important to find ranged damage because each point is worth more than three times as much. Um, it ends up just being incredibly valuable on this character. Let me buy both of these things and roll, and I will upgrade my screwdrivers. You don't really need to upgrade the screwdriver, and in fact, so you, you might want to pass on upgrading screwdriver a lot of the time on this character because the... Uh, damage scaling from engineering doesn't increase, and the base damage doesn't particularly go up. Only the landmine effect gets better when you upgrade your screwdrivers. We'll still get them to level 2 when they're cheap, but I'm not going to prioritize upgrading the screwdrivers, since what we're mostly using them for is just melee attacks. Definitely lock the turret and the small magazine. Small magazine, of course, excellent for this character. And do I want the Gummy Berserker? I think I will pass, although range is actually quite nice for this character, because one of the things that makes screw screwdrivers uh, a bad melee weapon, other than the normally bad scaling, is that they have very bad range. With even a single point of range damage found, you can see our minigun is doing two damage every shot, which is really powerful. Normally minigun needs quite a lot of damage scaling to increase its actual damage. Oh, oh I really want to chase this guy down. Come on, there we go. <laughs> Uh, definitely taking some speed here, and we didn't find any ranged damage, but I will take 8 harvesting. I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that, especially because we had a ranged damage item locked. Let me grab the fertilizer, grab the small magazine, grab the turret, and re-roll. We are again looking for any speed or range, or any range damage or um, harvesting. Harvesting is really nice for this character because you will at some points struggle for wave clear, so it really helps smooth out your power curve. Though, alone on amongst pretty much every character, you should prioritize damage, flat range damage, over harvesting, because it's so economically efficient to buy flat range damage for the cyborg. Notice that we are now in the engineering phase, so I'm just playing this as a melee character. I'm ignoring my minigun completely, which is hard to do. You actually have to, to think pretty weirdly to play this character, but just ignore the minigun as much as you can and play as though you are like a thief dagger character or something along those lines. At this point we have 30 harvesting, so I'm actually going to reroll looking for more ranged damage if we can find that, although I'll definitely take 15% attack speed, that's also very good. Here again, going to reroll Still looking for ranged damage. I'll do one more reroll, I think. We didn't get anything, but I do need to start repairing my percentage damage, so I'll take that as well. Buy a screwdriver and the beanie and roll. And the screwdriver and roll. And I will definitely take some lifesteal. We need to start getting our lifesteal going, but I will actually take the insanity before the 
Lifesteal, just because it gives me one extra wave of before I take the minus two harvesting, and we want both of those items, and I'll lock the Shady Potion as well. should try not to trigger your mind during the engineering phase of the game, but it's okay if you end up doing so. Especially early on, they will actually still help you kill stuff, even with only 10 base damage. And then what? or sorry, during the ranged damage phase of the game. I'm going to get those backwards occasionally, because I'm going to be saying each phrase so frequently, so try to bear with me. We definitely need some maximum HP at only 18. We're in quite a bit of risk here. But at least our harvesting is pretty good. I will just take one ranged damage here. It's the equivalent of a level 4 ranged damage upgrade, or almost the equivalent of a level 4 ranged damage upgrade, so it's still way better than all these level 2 upgrades. Here I am going to take all of these things. Hedgehog is ranged damage, so we're already up to 17 ranged damage. Something that we should consider is getting a second ranged weapon, so if I see a high level decent ranged weapon, especially before I fight my fight the elite, um, then I will probably pick it up. It, that would be like a submachine gun would be very good, shotgun is pretty good at killing an elite, something like an obliterator would be kind of perfect, but overall any of those things would do very well. I will take the Leather Vest, even though we do need maximum HP, and I might take Triangle of Power as well. This character does struggle to um, not take damage. Yeah, I think because we have the short range on our screwdrivers in the later stages of the map, I'm going to avoid the Triangle of Power, although we do quite badly want percentage damage, so... If you were very confident in your ability to not get hit, you could definitely take that. Our damage is quite good, so of course I'm letting these guys hatch. And because of how we built to basically use the screwdrivers just as melee weapons, our actual damage is better during the engineering phase than it is during the range damage phase, although of course the, the range damage we can do at range, so it's much safer. But because, just because we have five screwdrivers and only one minigun, our engineering damage is very good at this point. And even though it only scales 50%, when we're getting th more than three times as much of it, it's still going to scale very quickly. Here I will roll, I wouldn't mind this level 1 maximum HP, but I think we can get either a level 2 upgrade or just a range damage upgrade. And then here I'm going to roll again, because we can definitely do better than this. And I, I'm going to take 3% uh, lifesteal here. I would like the armor as well, but we're, we're getting a leather vest, and we need to get our lifesteal going quite quickly as well. Let's take the leather vest, I'll take the duck, and pocket factory is, is good, even though we can't get the engineering points from it, generating turrets, and at the end of the round we'll have the most turrets from Pocket Factory. Those will help during the engineering phase. We end up still with a lot of engineering, so even though we're building mostly as a melee damage character, any turrets that we buy, any constructs that we have, will help us clear the, the second half of the wave. Before round 12, when our Elite shows up, I really need to have quite a bit more maximum HP. 17 is obviously not adequate. And I also need to pick up just a little more lifesteal to make sure we can survive any hits we take. Our damage is okay, um, but damage is something that you will struggle with against Elites on this character, even with this build because it can be quite hard to get in there with your screwdrivers, especially given the low range of screwdrivers. So if we have to, we'll just play defensively and try not to die to the elite. Um, here I will just take some more lifesteal, get that going, and then we are going to grab this 
armor. Something to keep in mind is that any, obviously we don't want mastery anyways, but anything that decreases ranged damage on this character is really, really bad. So normally very efficient items, like for example, Peaceful B, are definitely to be avoided on this character. Here I am considering the gambling token, but building dodge when we have 18 maximum HP just is not correct, so I'm going to uh, keep rolling to get to something that gives us max HP, hopefully. I will buy the weird food, and I'll buy the screwdriver. And I do want both of these items. They're both extremely good items. But I think in this case, I actually have to roll past both of them because we're so desperate for maximum HP that I'm just going to be looking for that in the shop right now. I'll wait for one more reroll because we got pretty unlucky there. Because we're a landmine build, we shouldn't have too much trouble with this horde wave, at least once the engineering phase starts. But generally you'd rather be struggling during the ranged damage phase than struggling during the engineering phase, because the ranged damage phase you can is, is going to be easier, since the first half of a wave is always easier than the second half of a wave, um, and you have more ways to protect yourself. really hurts to leave blindfold and um, the gambling token or whatever the other one I left. There was two very good items, but we have to find max HP. 19 max HP is just a disaster. If I find a ghost scepter, I'll, I'll just take it. Definitely taking the compass. Speed is going to be really important. And, you know... Sad Tomato, it would leave me with 5 HP regen and half health, but we have the Lifesteal. I think it might be worth taking this anyways. Um, so I'm just going to grab that roll here, and I, I would love 12 Harvesting, but this character is so badly in need of maximum HP that I'm just going to take the, the 9 max HP over that. And then here, I'll take 15% more attack speed. Attack speed is very good with... Uh, screwdrivers which have which struggle with attack speed. Very happy to see another minigun here, which is fairly likely on this character because of how it how weapon tags work. You are more likely to see weapons that you already own, and going to two miniguns and four screwdrivers is totally fine. So we're we're gonna definitely do that. I will pick up this percent damage, but not this percent damage, because I, I really badly need to hit like 60, 70 max HP or so. I'm even considering buying Schmoop for 60 max, for 6 max HP here. It would decrease my range damage by a lot, 3.5, um, but we are in such dire need of maximum HP that it, I think it's worth considering. I think I will pass on it just because I also want the recycling machine this this round, but uh, you could definitely take that potentially and, and not have it be wrong. Here, I do want to increase my range. I kind of want all of these things. The, the leather vest is really good, of course, because it's a leather vest, but again, our max HP is really bad. The missile is quite good, but I don't know if it's good enough to lock. And clover is very good as well, but... We do need to get our lifesteal up. Given that all of these decrease stats that we really need to increase, I think locking any of them is actually going to be a mistake here. I think you have to be very disciplined in the shop on the cyborg. And only buy stats that you really badly need because it's so, you, you so badly need so many stats, even with this build. And you need to be way ahead of curve on your ranged damage in order to succeed on this character. Um, if you haven't gotten the idea, I think this is one of the harder characters in the game. I don't know if it's the hardest, but it's definitely up there. I'm taking quite a lot of damage here, because I am just walking into everything. <laughs> but got to get my, uh, my screwdrivers in play and pay attention to what I'm hitting with those. Because we only have four screwdrivers now, it does make the engineering phase a little harder. So it's possible that I want just a level four minigun and five screwdrivers instead. 
definitely take the coupon, of course, and we will recycle the boiling water here. Let me re-roll this mess and re-roll again. And I'll just take 3% lifesteal. That's that's really nice. I would love the range damage as well, but getting up to 10% lifesteal means that we will stay alive much more readily. The crit chance from the claw tree is fine. The screwdriver only costs 100, so I will upgrade the screwdriver. Although again, this doesn't particularly help with what we're doing upgrading the screwdrivers, so you may just want to pass on upgrading those. I will take uh, Gentle Alien, that's excellent, we need the max HP and we need the percentage damage. I'm still going to pass on Alien Baby even though we badly need max HP because it, it's so dangerous against elites. And then here, all of these are quite good. I will take Lure and Bait. Do I want Fairy? We don't actually have that many different tier 1s, although it would bring my regen up to 20. I think in this case, I still want it, but it's pretty close. Um, so I'm just going to hold with 140 here and lock the ferry. Normally, if we hadn't already gotten the sad tomato, I would not consider the ferry probably. Um, but given that we actually are building a decent amount of HP regen, it can be a decent secondary healing method. Normally on this character you you don't want to build any healing other than lifesteal off of your minigun because the minigun attacks so quickly that even moderate lifesteal solves all of your healing problems and this character's economy is, is typically quite weak so you have to be very efficient with how you do your healing. But fairy is a very efficient item so that will help solve that problem economically anyways looking for the second loot alien. Uh, there he is. Have to get in close. Hit him with my screwdrivers. Come on. There we go. And break the tree. Here we are going to recycle the alien worm, take the hedgehog for sure, and this is really good. We get 9 max HP. Now we're at a much more comfortable amount. Still not, not great for going into an elite, but at least we won't die in like one hit here. Mouse is excellent, probably the best item that we could find. Obviously more enemies is really good, but the 5% life still brings us up to 15%, so that should keep us alive uh, very easily. And in fact, I'm just going to buy this entire shop. Up to 20% life steal, that's great. I will lock this other minigun, and we'll just go to a level 4 minigun. And then I will lock the metal, definitely buying the beanie here. Do I want these sunglasses? It would make my crit chance... 9% um, after buying the metal. I don't think that's worth locking. It, it would be not bad, but I, I don't think it's worth locking. So we go in and we our goal is to try to kill this guy during the range damage phase if we can. So I'm trying to focus on it with both miniguns as much as possible. Later on, once we get a little more ranged damage, upgrades and and the later range damage upgrades at high levels are much more efficient we should be able to kill the elites very quickly right now we're struggling a bit as you can see i have to back off because i walked into a bunch of attacks and now i ha would have to fight it with my screwdrivers so we can try that a little bit I'm taking a lot of damage though, so I think we are not going to kill the elite this wave. Yeah, just don't have the DPS for it with the screwdrivers. If I'd found more range damage early on, we could maybe have made it happen, as is. We just use our lifesteal to survive. Definitely take plus two range damage, that's an excellent find here, and let's grab the leveled up minigun. Level 4 minigun scales at 75% instead of 50%, so it's a huge upgrade in terms of damage output. And then the metal is good as well. And now I will lock a blindfold because we can start building some crit chance and some dodge. Now that our max HP is a little better, that's worth doing, I think. Shackles is interesting because, uh, like I said, range is not bad on the screwdrivers, but I think um, at this point what we want mostly is just to buy max HP and defensive stats. Eight regeneration would be fine, but 
we don't gain any benefit from the engineering, really. Obviously, any of the projectile effects, piercing and bouncing, are especially good for this character because you use them both during the range damage phase, since you have a minigun or two, and during the engineering phase because your structures will use them. And you will end up with a decent amount of structures if the run is going well. In fact, one of the best ones to find is the, the level 2 turret, weirdly enough. Because the damage from the level 2 turret will start, will apply, and then, uh, like, the fire from the level 2 turret will be applied, and then it will start doing the more damage as you gain engineering during the engineering phase. So it ends up working very well for you. Here, I'll just take 20% attack speed. I could continue to roll for ranged damage, and that wouldn't be bad either, but um, at this point, we just want to get our lifesteal going, and attack speed is the best way to do that. Let me take the metal detector still, I think, and we'll buy this and this, of course, and then roll. Alien magic, one of the best things we could find, just a really efficient way to upgrade our HP. And do I want this level one screwdriver? I guess for 34, it's probably worth upgrading to another, a level four screwdriver. This is definitely a worse cyborg build, I think, than sort of the average one. We were really struggling to find max HP. I rolled many times unsuccessfully for range damage in the early game. So we're having to do some kind of emergency repairs to our build, but still very winnable. Have to transition to a melee character at this point. Oh. <laughs> walked into every attack there. But notice how quickly we're regaining our health. That's because we have all these miniguns with lifesteal. And quite decent consumable healing, which is helping a lot as well. Definitely want to make my way through the, the middle of the arena here to pick up everything. Take this armor for sure, and... At this point, we'll recycle the XP gain, definitely just more ranged damage. I like Sift's Relic a lot, but I think we probably have to pass on it for this character, just because there's so many things we're still missing. I guess given that we can afford to pick it up, I will, I'll buy it here. Non-weapon uh, non sources of damage are actually quite good on this character, Baby Elephant and Alien Eyes and, and so on, because they don't care about your, your ranged damage engineering split, so it gives you some, some much more consistent damage. Our luck is quite bad, though, so I'm going to pass on the Baby Elephant. I will roll, and I guess I will upgrade some screwdrivers and the Ugly Tooth as well. Ugly Tooth, of course, very good for engineering builds, since you apply the slow even across the map, and our miniguns will still apply the slow even when they're not doing any damage. Now we're reaching the point where our miniguns are doing quite decent DPS, though, because of our ranged damage. I would definitely like to find a little more. Though, again, the thing that we need most of all, I think, at this point is... Maximum HP. This build also has the advantage that because the screwdrivers actually do decent damage, normally the cyborg, if you built turrets, would struggle quite a bit with hordes, because engineering builds tend to struggle with hordes, and you wouldn't be doing any damage. This build, because our, our screwdrivers just attack through the horde and kill everything immediately, does very well against uh, hordes. Let me grab this, and definitely just taking max HP here, and then we will just buy out this shop. That's great. Keep on rolling. Shackles, still not amazing for us. A little more regeneration wouldn't be bad, and the range is good. 
Uh, scope is an item that's worth buying on this character and basically no other characters, so kind of worth keeping an eye out for this one. You get the range, which you do want, and you get ranged damage at a very efficient rate. Yeah, I'll keep upgrading my screwdrivers. Um, it's very cheap to upgrade screwdrivers, so even though I say you shouldn't prioritize it, it's still often worth doing, I think. Now, do I want this shackles? So it's two engineering, not amazing. 80 range and 8 HP regeneration. It caps my speed at 16, which is fine. That's a totally reasonable amount of speed. So basically, we're buying, we're spending 200 on 8 regeneration, and then the range kind of matters. I think it's worth it, although you could definitely avoid that, and I don't think it would be wrong to do so. And I definitely lock the landmines, and we actually want head injury quite badly here because our percent damage is, is quite low, and that's that's what's holding our DPS back more than anything else. These guys are breaking all my landmines before they do any damage. Once you reach the late game with this character, the scaling on your ranged damage should be so high that you just one-shot everything, either with your range damage during the range damage phase or with your screwdrivers during this engineering phase. And that makes the game much easier. This character does have, I think, a reasonably strong late game, but it can be a real struggle getting there because the, the ways that you get ranged damage in the early game are quite inefficient. Still just going to take ranged damage over everything else, even though we need the percent damage as well. This is 10 flat range damage, so that's really good. I'll take the lure, head injury, and landmines, and we'll roll again, and... I could take the beanie just to have slightly over speed cap in case we take stuff that reduces it. I don't think I'm going to do that though. Um, at this point, I've got a little more luck. I think I will take the baby elephant and I will roll again. Baby with a beard, obviously excellent for the range damage phase and also will still help us later on just by applying lifesteal. With these two miniguns, one of them leveled up, we do just kind of tear through everything during the range damage phase, so that's really nice. Got both my loot aliens down. A tree would be really good, because we have pocket factory and everything, so building up a few more turrets would be nice. Now I need to make sure that I am switching to thinking like a melee character. Really important to watch the timer on this character so that you can pay attention to what phase you're in and kind of how you should be playing. As we stand here, you know, our screwdrivers are just tearing through the horde there. Pickup range, we would help a little bit with consumables, but we have Sif's Relic, so we don't really need it. Definitely taking Poisonous Tonic, though. That's an excellent find for us. And Finn actually doesn't help as much as it normally would, because we're speed capped and already have 19% lifesteal, but I think it's still worth taking. Here, I could take uh, one range damage, 10% attack speed. Our attack speed is pretty good. I think I'm actually going to take two armor here. Our defensive stats are still... Uh, definitely suffering, so I really want to make sure to bolster, bolster those. I will in fact take 2 max HP at the cost of 3% attack speed, and obviously we'll take Lens. Lens is a great item for this character, super efficient way to buy ranged damage, so very good to get that going. And Baby with a Beard is great as well. Let me roll past this metal detector and upgrade the screwdriver. Mutation is an item that's worth mentioning, so you will buy mutation on this character when most characters are going to pass on the mutation, because um, it's just 
so good to buy even the one range damage items because they're worth three and a half range damage each. Um, so you're going to end up needing to buy speed more often just because this item exists. This character will end up decreasing their speed quite a bit in the early game. So I'm going to buy that. I will lock this because 20% uh, crit chance will be quite a lot actually and help with our damage significantly. Let me get down here and start focusing this guy down with our miniguns. There we go. Just in time, too, before... Well, I guess not just in time, but well before we swap to the engineering phase, so very nice to have that out of the way in time. Not that you can't kill stuff during the engineering phase with this build anyways, because you do just have weapons that scale quite well. But it's much easier fighting elites at range, of course. Anvil, even at this stage in the game, is probably still good. It will... I guess we will get two upgrades from it. The Wave 18 chop and the Wave 19 chop. Yeah, that's still worth it. Um, hopefully it upgrades our mini gun next wave. Let me grab this blindfold and crit chance, and I could take Weird Ghost here, actually. We have quite good regen and 20% lifesteal. We really still need max HP, so I'm going to do that and just try not to die right away. Incendiary Turret, like I mentioned, is actually quite good for this character. And I'm going to lock the minigun in case we don't find... In case our anvil doesn't upgrade the minigun, we're going to want this. And then we can always just go up to three ranged weapons for the final bosses, just to try to deep burst them down as soon as possible. You see, it was pretty safe to take weird ghosts here. We're already basically back at full. Because of how much life steal we have. And this is why I say that the minigun is the best healing item in the game. I guess technically, like, the Gatling laser or the chain gun are better, but... flamethrower as well. Meleeing everything down here. But our dodge is decent, our armor's okay, and our healing is incredible, and that's sort of where you want to end up at the end of the game on this character, so that you can wade into crowds of enemies with your, with your crappy screwdrivers and come out the other side. Sure, I'll take Snail. Has no downside, because we're speed capped anyways. And here are... Oh, I guess our dodge is not actually that decent, but I'll, I'll still take 9% dodge. Going up to 20% dodge is, is pretty good. Here I'm just going to recycle this screwdriver and buy the third minigun so we can try to kill the bosses as quickly as possible. I will buy this adrenaline again, and luck for minus damage we don't want. Sure, I'll just take an incendiary turret. That'll be fine. And then we're off to fight the bosses. Try to get all three of my weapons focusing them very quickly. If we don't kill them during the range damage phase, then we actually might struggle, because I went down to three screwdrivers. But we should have plenty of damage to do that, and also they, uh... The range damage phase is longer during the boss fight because the wave is longer and it switches halfway through the wave. So with the 90 second wave, you have 45 seconds instead of the normal 30. Alright, my friends, I hope that that has helped you with the Cyborg, which is a very weird and difficult class. So, um, with any luck, that is helpful. I think that this character is requires a ton of shop discipline. You really need to roll 
very aggressively for range damage. We end, end with 66, which I think is pretty low, actually, for this character. But we did end up with excellent lifesteal, and having gotten good harvesting early let us overcome the kind of weak early game of this character. Um, and I think that the screwdriver build is more consistent than the wrench build, because then you still have a weapon you can attack with during the engineering phase of the game, and it lets you buy percent damage and attack speed and crit chance and still have those do something, so those stats are really important to let you burst down elites really quickly, and then having those still do something in the second half of the game I think is really important, and it can be quite hard to stay alive in the engineering phase if you just have four turrets on the field. All right, my friends, as always, I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, feel free to leave a comment for the algorithm. I always appreciate everyone who leaves comments, like the video, and subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Cheers, my friends, and I'll catch you next time.